Hello everyone, welcome to the second video on building a chatbot with chat history using LLM. And in the first video, we have seen how to enable chat history using Python list. And we did a comparison of that manual Python list append method and LangGraph persistence. And manual list can be used for simple chatbot interactions. Basic conversation history it can maintain. It doesn't support state persistence across different sessions and it, it was limited to the sequential model calls and it doesn't have built-in fault tolerance but if you see LangGraph this has a lot of advanced features this supports complex AI workflows that needs multiple steps and if needed you can even add this into a database and this can easily integrate with other AI services and easier to create modular AI workflows. So even this can remember the previous state and make it easier to recover from failures. And first we'll see a quick introduction about LangGraph. LangGraph is an open source library in the LangChain ecosystem built to support multi-agent systems. It is designed for creating complex AI pipelines, supports automated decision-making workflows and major components are nodes nodes represents individual tasks and it just defines the connections and flow between nodes and state maintains and updates data as it moves through workflow and we'll see how to use nodes edges and a simple message state LangGraph offers extensive flexibility but requires some learning but in our use case it is going to be very simple we are just going to store the chat history in memory now we'll see what is LangGraph persistence. LangGraph has an inbuilt persistence layer through checkpointers. We'll see how to use checkpointers. We'll use in-memory checkpointer. And this enables saving and restoring the execution state. And memory server is used for saving the state of workflow in memory. And start is a predefined entry point in LangGraph state machine. And message state is going to be a dictionary which represents the structure of the message state and thread id is a unique id which allows access to the graphs state we'll go to the documentation of lang chain persistence so we just need to add this code into our existing implementation to enable lang graph persistence and if you see here first we are defining a state graph and we can see here the message state we are passing here and we have a function for invoking the model then this is where we are adding the nodes and this is going to be the entry point and we have only one node here and we are calling this particular function here and when we run this workflow it will be triggering this function for storing the memory we are using this memory server so it is going to be an in memory checkpoint and then we are creating a workflow and we are calling that as an app and adding that in memory workflow there using compile so now let us start coding i have created a new notebook here 0202 lang graph persistence uh, we can just copy from here and here we need to add one more library lang graph and from here i'll copy all these And we are using the key from here, the API key, and then human message, system message, AI message, and creating the model. Now we need to start writing code for LangGraph persistence. So from LangGraph dot checkpoint dot memory import memory server, then from Langraph dot graph import will give start comma message state comma state graph. So this will help you to define the state graph. So let me just create a variable here. So this is mainly going to have four steps. So step one is define state graph. And here I'll create a variable called workflow equal to instance of state graph. And, and we can see here the key is going to be state schema. And the state schema is going to be the message state. 
and previously we have seen that okay this is going to be a dictionary represents the structure of the state and start is the predefined entry point and thread allows to access its state now second step is creating a function so llm model and i'll call this call model and then we just need to pass the state and here we can just give a type hint so that this function knows okay this is expecting the type message state so i can just copy this put it here and here i'll give a system prompt so i'll just put the instructions in the list here i'm saying that you are a knowledgeable and helpful assistant answer all questions accurately and concisely so i'm just setting the context for our interaction and then i'll just create a variable messages equal to and inside list can give system message and within that we need to pass the system prompt so this is going to be the context then plus uh, from the state we will even pass the messages okay now we have all the messages now we'll invoke the model so i'll just create response equal to model dot invoke and we'll pass the messages and in return we'll return a dictionary with messages and then this response okay so function is completed now we need to add node to the graph so we already created a workflow using state graph add node to graph so workflow dot add edge and we need to give start comma model then uh, workflow dot add node and here we need to add model comma call model so we will be calling this particular function here now here we are going to use an in memory check pointer i'll just create a variable memory equal to memory saver then app equal to workflow dot compile then we need to pass that check pointer check pointer memory so now the lang graph persistence code is completed let me just run it now we need to add the code for the user input what we can do we can go to the previous example and i'll stop this and i'll copy this and from here we can remove all the history code and uh, let me just delete that and i'll convert this into a list and we can now directly pass this input message and this will work but now here instead of model dot invoke now if we just try this this will work right so you can see here this will work but instead of model now we need to pass app when you are passing this workflow what we need to do we need to pass the key message and value is going to be input message comma we need to pass a config and you can see here the config so we need to define a config here we'll go to the documentation of langchain persistence and here we can see a thread is a unique id or thread identifier assigned to each 
check point saved by check pointer and when invoking a graph with a check pointer you must specify a thread id so we can see one example here and under check pointer we can just give all these values now and here also we can see lang graph has a built-in persistence layer implemented through check pointers we can go through this document to understand this implementation now we will just create a config here i'll just call this config equal to the key is going to be uh, configurable we can check the documentation here so it is configurable and thread id i'll paste it here and thread id we can give anything i'll give lang graph test and under this config we need to give the variable config i'll stop this and here we are going to get an error for this response dot content because previously we were invoking model directly model response was having a key or attribute called content now but app is not going to have this content and one more edit is there we have to give messages instead of message here now we'll try running this here i'll say list of lm models and it is saying that no attribute content now we can just directly print the response run it again i'll put the question now you can see it is printing the data from here if you see the response the last element in this list is going to have the actual data so what we can do we will just try to give the key messages then the last element will run it again and here we are able to see the content and if you search here you'll be able to see a key called response metadata and under response metadata we can see the token usage that we'll cover later but now we'll just try to print only the content so here i'll give dot content stop it and run it again now this is printing it properly now i'll ask a follow-up question explain me the first one now it is talking about birth how it is trained and we can see the training details of birth so in this way we can just store the chat history using lang graph persistence in the next video we'll see how to check the token usage of all these interactions i hope this video was helpful thanks for watching see you in the next video